Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Knife Engineering book, Steel, Heat Treat, and Geometry by Dr. Laren Thomas. So, um, first off, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank my Patreon patrons for making it possible for me to just pick up a random book that seems interesting to me I, uh, on a lock. Um, thank you very much for that, patrons. Next thing, size comparison. Here the book is against the Spydeco Delica. And so what we can see here is that the book is substantially longer in spine length than the Delica here, and... Um, uh, that it is a book which makes this a fundamentally weird size comparison. Um, next thing, uh, what is this guy? Who, who is this, Laren Thomas? So, uh, Laren Thomas is a metallurgist. Um, he's a, a great guy. He's also known as Knife Steel Nerds. Um, KnifeSteelNerds.com is his address. Um, he is a great, uh, he writes great articles there and goes deep into specific steels, right? If you have a curious about, you know, what the heck is, uh, you know, the, 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 the tungsten carbide that people are making blades out of, he's a great place to go for that kind of thing. You should subscribe to him, and frankly, you should be a Patreon patron for him, because he is one of the people who is bringing, frankly, the most rigorous scientific testing that I'm aware of to the knife world and making it publicly available. I'm sure lots of companies are doing scientific work inside, but he's making it available out there to the world, and I appreciate that so very much. The other way that you might know Laren Thomas is actually by his father. Um, Devin Thomas is a very famous Damascus steelmaker um, from way back in the day, um, and so you, uh, well, and through through the present, basically, um, but uh, Laren Thomas is Devin Thomas's son, but I think he's done more than enough for himself and his own right for the community by doing this book. So let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little book right here. So on the good side, um, to start with, let me just kind of show you what's going on here in terms of the overall approach, um, I think it's got very good coverage. It covers a lot of the issues that one might need. You kind of start off with some very basic facts about what a knife itself is. You know, for instance, what is a blade grind? Giving you some kind of basic ideas of things like that. It talks about the idea of flexing of knives, toughness, chipping, all of those things. These are very interesting uh, elements of knife making that is sort of just generally there. What does sharpness actually look like at a very, very low level? What do we mean when we talk about edge retention or corrosion resistance at tough what do those terms actually mean from a scientific perspective? He also goes immediately into kind of the structure of steel and gets into, you know, phase change diagrams of steel and things like that. And I'm going to talk a lot about some of the nerdy stuff that he gets into, but the thing that makes this very interesting, here you go, you start getting into like grain size and things like that. Um, but he defines all of his terms early on. You may be thinking to yourself, well, Nick, I don't know, I'm not that much of a scientific person. Uh, maybe this is going to be above me. I mean, certainly there, he goes pretty deep and nerdy into some elements of it, but it's written in such a way that it's actually pretty accessible. So especially this section here is going to be, and that's, by the way, this section is like 97 pages. Um, it's going to be pretty accessible to a bunch of different people. Then he goes deeper into what exactly knife steel, you know, metallurgy looks like. You know, what happens when you start talking about phase changes for steels? You know, what the heck's an austenite, etc. Um, then goes into heat treatment and things like that. Then talks a little bit more about sort of the practical side of things, the engineering element. You know, a lot of this is more science. Well, certainly this stuff is more scientific. This is more engineering sorts of things. Um, and then finally goes more into, you know, how do you make a knife? You know, what do you, what should you think about as you're doing heat treatment? What's Damascus steel look like, etc.? And then provides a whole bunch of references as well as a bunch of heat treatment recommendations, things like that. Appendices that are going to be very good if you're a knife maker and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, what would I do if I was going to make a steel out of, or make a knife out of BD1N? How should I go ahead and do that? etc. and create using data and creating consistent graphs and things like that. So he actually covers a very broad range of things that are very important, I think, to a lot of people, both in knife making, but also I think in knife enthusiasm, generally speaking. It's good to have a framework under which to understand the idea of toughness, understand chipping, bending, flexing, how all of these things work and why all of these things work at a more chemical, scientific, metallurgical level that's a word. Um, so to me, at least, I think one of the things that's good is the, 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 the scope of it. It's covering kind of all of the major important parts of the knife making world. Um, the next thing that I appreciate very much is that uh, certainly there are areas where I, I have a scientific background, right? I, I, I am in acoustics by trade, so to speak. And so I, I, I certainly look at and generate my share of graphs. And there are definitely parts of the book that I think are going to be a little bit more uh, accessible to somebody who, for instance, understands what linear regression looks like. And I'll see if I can find some nice uh, but anyways, you know, there were definitely parts of the book where, that, that depend on a little bit more in the way of 
of scientific knowledge, but I think for the most part, though, Laren does a really good job of explaining all of these things in relatively straightforward terminology. I felt like, you know, I come into this with a lot of scientific background, but I didn't come into it with a lot of knife-making background, because, well, I'm not a knife-maker, I'm just a random jackass. But it was still very easy for me to understand large elements of this, and to understand, for instance, okay, this, this page here is talking about why it is that you don't want to have sharp angles, for instance, on the grind of a knife, why that can lead to the, 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 the well, issues, it can lead to toughness issues, etc. Uh, you know, why, why it is that you think about the rolling direction of steel, all these things that I never really thought about are made relatively accessible here in this book. And so that's another thing I appreciate is I feel like the level was done very well. It's going to be, there's enough detail here for you to get really deep and nerdy into it. If you're thinking about, oh my God, grain structure, then this is a great place. But if you're just trying to figure out, okay, what the heck is this hardness thing everybody's talking about? And what does that actually mean? This book has got something there for you. Next thing, I appreciate the completeness of it very much. Um, it, frankly, there are places where it almost feels a little too complete. Um, you know, uh, here's a good example. There is a, a chunk of this that has a whole bunch of micrographs of various different uh, steels in there and showing off and explaining what you're looking at and things like that. I gotta be honest, was I carefully studying every single micrograph? But I, I can look at it and go like, oh, okay, crew air in the ingot's gonna be a little bit different than the powder metallurgy version. You see the carbides right here are a little bit bigger in the regular version than the powder metallurgy version. He goes into, what's powder metallurgy? allergy, etc. There are places where it's maybe a little bit overly exhaustive, but honestly, I don't think that's a bad thing. And given that you're not paying, you know, a bazillion dollars for it, I, 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 there's no harm in having a little bit of extra information in there. So I think the exhaustiveness, though, of it is very, very good. There were very few things that I felt like were missing from this book that I, I wasn't able or uh, wasn't able to get from it. So I appreciated that very much. Next thing I got to say, um, it was actually reasonably well written, um, and it, 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 that sounds like a. a, a or something, but it really, it isn't. I, I, I review, among other things, I review scientific papers, for day, and so I, I read a lot of scientific writing here, and I feel like this was pretty well done. Like I said, the, the level was aimed well um, for people, and although certainly there are going to be people who are going to get more out of it with metallurgy backgrounds, um, at the same time, uh, it, it was done well, and I didn't notice a lot of it. I think I caught one typo in the entire thing, and I'm trying to remember where it was. It was the first page of a chapter someplace, and it was one of the later chapters, and it was like something like he forgot an Ann. But aside from that, it was it was reasonably well done. I didn't feel like, God, this, this was self-published or something like that. No, it, it, that was definitely there. And so that's good. Um, And then uh, finally, I would say on the good side, I just appreciated the price on this guy very much. This was not a super expensive book. Um, and in fact, it seemed clear to me that Laren made the choices he did in order to make this accessible to a larger number of people. I mean, big scientific books in my life tend to be in the hundreds of dollars, and this, I th want to say, was like 35 bucks or something like that. This was not a super expensive book. Um, and so I, I, and I, frankly, I gladly would have paid 60. Laren, don't change the price. I'm just saying the price was good. So to me, all of that is the good here, is that the price was very good. The writing was very good. It was very complete with a lot of information. In fact, in many ways, way more than I thought I needed. But now I understand, see, talking about why it is that bending breaks steel. Like, of course I needed to know that. I wanted to know that. I appreciated very much the level was done well and uh, the comprehensiveness of the material generally covering all different areas of this kind of thing. On the great side, to me, I learned so damn much from reading this book. And given, I am not a, I am not a knife maker. I'm not a metallurgist. I, I, I am, as some people have said, I'm a tourist in this industry. No, I, I am, I'm interested in this world, but it's not something that I've ever had any kind of professional training in. But going through and reading this brought to me so much knowledge that I didn't have before. Um, there were things that I now understand. For instance, why does cryo treatment do a thing, right? You know, why heat treatment kind of makes sense, right? You're loosening things up, but then, uh, and then you the loosening, the, well, that is, you're changing the Austin. I, I now understand why you heat treat, but more importantly, I understand why cryo works because that always weirded me out. Why would cooling something off create permanent changes in that thing? Isn't it already cooled? That, Anyways, I digress. You'll have to read the book to find out why. And it's cool. It's really cool. But more importantly, I came away from this book understanding something even more important than that, which is everything that I don't know about heat treatment, right? I'm not going to sit here or, or any of this stuff. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that now I understand exactly how all of these things work. No, absolutely not. Um, if I read back through it a few more times, I might be a little bit closer to it, but I'd have to apply it. Then. But more importantly, I now understand the extent of the things out there in the knife 
world that make these things under uh, that make these things important. I have a much greater respect for people who are doing heat treat very very well. I understand, you know, certainly it's a process that's doable, but I understand more why it has to be done right. I understand more why really good hardness measurement can be a little bit difficult, and I can understand more and more why how bad hardness measurement could happen too. I understand a whole bunch of these different things, and I now know more of what I don't know, and that's one of the fundamental truths of humanity, right? Um, and this is a weird thing, but as you learn more, you generally feel dumber uh, be because you're realizing, wait a second, I don't understand exactly how the world works. There's so many gaps in my knowledge. But this, to me, I learned a bunch. And one of the ways I can tell that is that I feel dumber having read it because now I understand all the things that I, I, I want to keep learning. I want to understand more. And so I learned so damn much from this book and I nerded out so hard with this. I loved going through this. And I actually did just kind of read it. And certainly, like I said, I, I skipped over a couple of the micrographs, etc. And, and, you know, I, I kind of stopped where we got into references and such. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I very much enjoyed reading this. And I learned so much about knife making, generally speaking, from it, that I, it's very, very easy for me to recommend in that in that way. On the bad side, a couple of little issues with it. Um, you know, to start with, one of the th issues that I kind of had, and this is just purely nitpicking, but I noticed that in many cases, um, the, this, the uh, the, the, the figures and the tables were disjoint in the document from where they were supposed to be. You know, in some cases, figure through seven. Oh, here's figure through seven. But in other cases, tables might be on the next page, etc. And very often, the uh, captions of them weren't super descriptive. There were things in the text that I would have preferred to see in the caption as I'm sitting there looking at it right next to each other. Anyways, not a big deal. Um, and certainly, I can sympathize with putting, you know, typesetting tables that, that, that's a thing. Uh, Laren, you need LaTeX. La LaTeX, let's just be real here. That's a typesetting engine. But anyways, I, I um, there, there were definitely a couple of little issues with that. Um, Next thing, there were a couple of places where I felt like I had to jump back, especially when the, in that transition from uh, going into heat treatment and such. I, I definitely had to go back to the phase-changing uh, chapter again and get like, okay, hold on. Martensite is which one? And then, so a couple of places where it would have been nice to check back in. Okay, we've already talked about X, Y, and Z. That, that, that could have been helpful. There. Next thing, um, and this is getting into maybe a little bit more of a big issue for me, um, is that I felt like I wanted more discussion of bad steels. Laren has done a great example of um done a great job of discussing steels that are w good for using in knife steels. But one of the things I walked away with um, was I, I didn't feel like I understood why some steels weren't good for knives. Uh, you know, why is it that when I get a, you know, a your random uh, here we go. This will work. Uh, you know, why, why is this steel here uh, going to be not ideal? Why is this going to be soft, etc.? I would have liked a little bit more detail on why some of the bad steels out there, so to speak, are bad. Why can't I just take a random, you know, a piece of steel that I find on the side of the road and turn it into a nice knife? Etc. Um, and I, I understand the answers, and I actually asked that last learn afterwards. But still, I would have liked to see a little bit more detail on what makes a good knife steel good for as being a knife steel. I know it's covered in there in places, but maybe putting that separately um, might have been helpful. Um, next thing, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more in the way of discussion about the steel ratings and things like that. One of the cool things that you do get out of this book is the um, the, the, the steel ratings that he's giving you, corrosion resistance, toughness ratings, etc. Um, and in fact, there's this, this chart here, which is an amazing little chart that I'm going to be pulling out over and over again, but where he's giving actual numerical values like maximum... Uh, hardness ratings, things like toughness, edge retention, etc., to a whole bunch of different common knife steels out there, including a bunch of ones that I had actually never really heard of uh, and certainly never really used. You know, 26C3, I... I'm sure it's out there, but I sure haven't heard of it in a pocket knife. But, uh, you know, I wish he would have taken a little bit more time to kind of dive into why exactly some of these radii and kind of get a little bit meta with, you know, why exactly 110V performed as well as it did relative. Uh, but then again, that's also what the blog is about. So I can understand wanting to keep it a little bit, uh, you know, keep the book a little bit more compact there. Um, and by the way, I love this section on pattern. I'm gushing here, but I really enjoyed reading this book. Um, and then uh, finally on the, uh, so I, I definitely want 
wanted a little bit more discussion of sort of bad steals and what makes that there. And I wanted that discussion of, uh, you know, specifically how, how these steals work. And then finally, on the bad side, um, I feel like there was a, a fair amount, like in terms of the typesetting here, and this is a nitpick, but it also made the book, um, it, it read suspiciously fast because on a lot of pages, because there were all these plots and such, they, they, there were kind of suboptimal distributions of things. There were a lot of white spaces around there. Like I said, made the book read pretty quick. But as a result, um, I feel like there could have been a little bit more efficiency, shorter margins, etc. Um, and so it ended up being a much bigger book in sort of its its heft and its practice than I think it actually read like. I, I think I got through this in the course of three or four days uh, with some, given a fair amount of heavy reading. Uh, whereas I, I thought, oh God, this is going to be massive. So um, on the bad side, the typesetting ended up making the book seem a lot bigger than it actually is, and maybe waste a little paper in that way. Um, I wanted to see a little bit more in-depth discussion about the actual testing that Laird has done, and uh, giving kind of more applied advice for actual knife geeks as they're going through there, although again, a lot of that is on his blog already. Um, I definitely wanted to hear more information about what makes bad steals bad for pocket knives, and um, then uh, finally, there were definitely some issues where uh, I could have used him to kind of circle back to things he'd already taught us, and also some areas where I would have liked to see captions uh, get a little bit more in the way of informative, um, you know, but again, that's a difficult thing. There's always the next edition. On the ugly front, honestly, there's nothing really ugly here. I, I was, I am a big, big fan of this book, and if I had a book club, I'd be recommending it, and actually, we're in the conclusion, so let's go ahead and do that. Look, if I had a book club, I would be recommending this book. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, part of this is, like I said, I am a scientist. I am a gigantic geek. And as a result, this was bringing metallurgy into geek country for me. This was bringing metallurgy into a world that uh, now I can kind of understand in the same sorts of ideas that I, I use to understand the rest of the world. Now I can kind of get a better sense of what exactly it means when we talk about toughness. Why do some steels chip rather than deforming, etc.? These are questions that I kind of knew were questions, but I never had a satisfactory answer to um, until I went through and I read this. So as a knife person, the fact that this was both, you know, completely, well, not completely exhaustive, obviously there's still information, but the fact that it was so exhaustive, the fact that it brought up so many really important elements of the, the knife making world, the fact that it got into detail about all of these things at various levels, ranging from the very practical, you know, okay, how do I actually do heat treatment to the completely theoretical of, oh, well, it turns out you can actually do this other thing with heat treatment, but it doesn't bring you that much benefit, etc. The fact that it did all of that left me feeling, you know, really, really good about having learned a whole bunch of stuff in there. And it let me understand even more the, the areas that my knowledge is weak, so I can go ahead and continue learning as I move on there. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, sure, there were a couple of little issues with it, and a few areas where I'd like to see it expanded, but I, this book is a gem. It's a little weird to call a book a gem, but I guess, why why, why isn't it, right? Um, It's a thing. It's a crystal, at the very least. Uh, anyways, um, it, or it's got crystal instruction. I, I'm, I'm going to stop with that. This is a great book, and as a knife enthusiast, um, and somebody who is certainly a little bit excited in the cutlery world, this was a really useful thing for me to better understand this hobby. This was a really useful, uh, you know, the couple of days I spent reading this will pay themselves back in spades as I interact with the knife world. Not f pretending that I'm an expert, but now having a better sense of what's going on when people who are experts, when people like Laren, when people like uh, Sean, Big Brown Bear, start talking, they, they, where it's like, okay, or Sal Glass or any of the other people, there were tons of people out there who are very, very expert in steel. This will give me a better way to understand those conversations. It'll give me a better sense of what it is that I need to learn next. And it gives me a better just sort of sense of how exactly what choices are being made. You know, what the trade-offs are between hardness and stainlessness and why there's a trade-off there, um, etc. And by the way, I really like the takeaways that he gave you at the end, one of which is that, hey, edge geometry is important, which, yeah, anyways, I, I digress. Um, the, the, the last very page there is uh, is pretty excellent. I, I very much like the wrapping it all up sections there. But nonetheless, I highly, highly recommend, if you are in the knife game and you are at all interested in how the, 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 these tools actually work at the chemical level, at the physical level, at, at all of these different levels, why it is that you need the heat treat, why it is that toughness matters, why it is that all of these things, 
this is a great resource. And in fact, this is the best resource I've found, and I've looked around a fair amount. So, Laren, well done. This is an amazing book, and I'm going to recommend, well, I clearly just did recommend it, but I'm going to be recommending it to a lot of people. And it, this has really enhanced my ability to enjoy this hobby in the kind of nerdy scientific way that I'm used to enjoying things. And I think it's going to be a very, it's going to be written at a level that's going to be accessible to a lot of people, even if you don't consider yourself nerdy and scientific. So, if you are uh, deep in the knife game and you want to learn more about the nerdy side of it, then by God, this is a really great book, and I uh, there you go. So I hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And I'll put a link in the description down there below. Uh, but yeah, anyways, there you go. Uh, have a good one, everybody. Bye now.